This is part 96 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to perform authorization checks in views in ASP.NET Core MVC. This technique is very useful if you want to show or hide UI elements based on whether the logged in user has access to them or not. Let's understand this with an example. At the moment, I'm logged in with the username pregim at pregimtech.com and this user is a member of the admin role. So we see this manage navigation menu item. Now let's log out and log in with a username who is not a member of the admin role. This user tested pregimtech.com is not a member of the admin role. So we have hidden manage navigation menu item. So based on the logged in user role, we want to show or hide manage navigation menu item. And we know this navigation menu is in the layout view. We discussed how to perform role based authorization checks in views in detail in part 83 of this video series. Notice we are injecting ASP.NET Core sign-in manager service into the layout view using at inject directive and the sign-in manager service is in this namespace so we have the required using declaration and then we want to check if the user is signed in for that we are using is signed in method of the sign-in manager service passing it the user object and we want to check if this user is in the admin role so we are using is in role method passing it the name of the role which is admin so if these two expressions return true that means the user is signed in and he is in the admin role so only then render this manage navigation menu item otherwise it won't be rendered this is role based authorization check in views how do we do claims based authorization check in views let's understand this with an example at the moment i'm logged in with this username pregim at pregimtech.com let's go to the list users page and edit this user notice he is a member of the admin role and he has these three claims edit create and delete role now let's go back to the list users page and edit this test user let's make him member of the admin role and let's also give him create role claim so this test user only has create role claim he does not have edit and delete role whereas this user pregim at pregimtech.com has all the three claims now let's go to list roles page notice we are displaying both edit and delete buttons to be able to edit and delete this role because this logged in user has both the claims edit role and delete role now let's log out and log back in with that test username navigate to the list roles page notice we are still displaying edit and delete buttons in spite of this logged in user not having edit role and delete role claims so here's what we want to do if the logged in user has edit role claim only then display this edit button if he does not have it hide this button we'll discuss how to do this for the edit button you do it as an exercise for the delete button in asp.net core Claims are policy based. We discussed claims and claim policies in detail in our previous videos in this series. Now we want to create a policy for edit role claim. Let's make a copy of this and then change the bits that are required. First, let's name our policy edit role policy. And in order to satisfy this policy, the logged in user must have edit role claim. Next, on the list roles view, we want to check if the logged in user satisfies this edit role claims policy that we have just created in short we want to perform claims based authorization check on this view for that we need to inject asp.net core built-in service i authorization service and remember to inject a service into view we use at inject directive this service is in microsoft.aspnet core dot authorization namespace Let's call the service instance authorization service. If we scroll down a bit, here is the edit button that we want to dynamically show or hide. So let's use an F block. On the authorization service, we have 
authorize async method. As the name implies, this is an async method. So let's use await keyword. This method needs two parameters, the user that we want to authorize and the authorization policy that we want to check. If you recollect, the name of our policy is edit role policy. Notice from the IntelliSense, this method returns task of authorization result. So let's wrap the method call along with the await keyword with another pair of brackets. And when I press dot, notice on the authorization result object, we've got succeeded Boolean property. And this property returns true if this user has satisfied this policy. And that's when we want to render the edit button. So let's move this anchor element inside the pair of curly brackets. Let's save these changes so far and take a look at the browser. Notice we are still logged in with the test username. Let's reload the page. Edit button is gone because this user does not have edit role claim. So he does not satisfy edit role policy and hence the edit button is hidden. If we log in with the other username, prajim at prajimtech.com, he has edit role claim. So edit button will be displayed. Now, one very important point to keep in mind is it's not enough if we just show or hide UI elements on the view like this. The respective controller actions must also be protected. Otherwise, the user can directly type the URL in the address bar and access the resources. Let me explain what I mean. Though we are not displaying edit button to this user, he will still be able to edit these roles. All he needs to do is in the URL, change the name of the action method to edit role. And then to be able to edit a role, we need to specify the ID of the role which we want to edit. So we can copy this and paste it in the URL right here. Notice we are able to get to edit role view. Let's change the name of this role to admin1, click update. Notice the role name is changed as expected. Let's change it back. So the point that I'm trying to make is it's not enough if we just hide the UI elements. We also have to protect the respective controller actions. So let's go to the administration controller and decorate this HTTP get edit role action with the authorize attribute and specify the name of the policy using the policy parameter. We also need to protect HTTP POST edit role action. So let's copy this and paste it on the HTTP POST edit role action. Notice now if we try to get to the edit role page directly by typing in the address bar, we are automatically redirected to the access denied view. So it's very important we protect the respective controller actions as well in addition to hiding the UI elements. To perform claims based authorization in a view, inject I authorization service. If you need this service in multiple views, consider importing it in view imports file. So we do not have to import it in every individual view. We discuss the significance of view imports file in detail in part 31 of this video series. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.